Hi guys, today we're going to look at sound, the production of sound, audible frequencies and the nature of sound. We'll also look at echoes and some experiments as well. The production of sound. So sound waves come from a vibrating source such as this uh, speaker here. Now the medium uh, that you can hear is air waves. The air around us, uh, sound can be transmitted through air the speaker here moves forwards and backwards and as it moves forwards it pushes or compresses the air and that compression that compression moves forwards out until it gets to your ear now if you could see the individual particles as the uh, uh, sound leaves the speaker what you'd see is there's an area of compression each one of these little dots represents an, an air particle and their compression waves move forward so here you can see this is where the sound uh, waves are compressed so the particles in the air uh, come together in between these areas of compression we call uh, these areas here where the air is being kind of rarefied so we call them rarefactions now the distance between uh, two compressions uh, is actually equal to the wavelength or between the two rarefractions is also equal to the wavelength so for example here here's a wavelength there's a wavelength there's a wavelength and even there's a wavelength now one thing that you need to know are the audible frequencies that human beings can hear there aren't many things that Cambridge expects you to learn uh, like like simple facts but this is one of the facts that is there stated in the syllabus that you have to know. So an audible frequency, that's sound waves that you can hear. And the range that a healthy human being can hear is from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So 20 hertz is a very, very low bass sound. 20,000, well, some old TV sets, sometimes they can make this really annoying high-pitched whistling sound that often children can hear the adults can't because after some time your hearing becomes uh, actually progressively worse so maybe uh, adults can't hear this high whereas children actually can now i just want to talk about the speed of sound in different mediums in air depending on the air pressure but uh, the speed of sound in air is about 330 340 meters per second in water it's actually a bit a bit quicker it's around 1,400 meters per second. And in a solid, such as concrete, it actually really increases to almost 5,000 meters per second. So five kilometers a second, that's pretty fast. So here's an example of an experiment of how you can find the speed of sound, although it's very, very basic, really. You could get a little stopwatch, make a little sound. The sound will come this way and reflect off here, uh, off the wall. And then you can time how long does it take for the sound to go there and back. You know this distance here and back. And then you use speed equals distance divided by time. And you can work out the speed of sound in air. Now also you need to be aware of the difference between loudness and pitch. Now a loud sound uh, in science terms would say it's got a very large amplitude. A high pitch sound is a high frequency. So the opposite, a quiet sound would have a very small amplitude and a low pitch sound would have a low frequency. So I've drawn some examples of the different uh, pitches and uh, loudnesses. So here we've got an example of a loud low pitch. So the low pitch means the wavelength is very large and it actually have a low frequency sound. Here we've got a, a, a quiet and low pitch so this time because it's a quiet sound the amplitude is much smaller than the loud low pitch but it's still got roughly the same wavelength so it would actually be a low frequency sound here we've got a loud high pitch so the amplitude is quite high and it's comparable to the uh, loud low pitch so we've got a, a large amplitude but the wavelength is much smaller so the frequency would actually be much higher. So higher pitch, remember, means high frequency. And finally, uh, a quiet high pitch 
The amplitude is very small, but the wavelength is quite small as well, so the frequency would be high. So remember, high pitch, high frequency. And finally, although we did cover it in the experiment, just want to go over what is an echo, because it's there in the syllabus. An echo is where sound is reflected off a boundary. For example, in this case, we've got a wall. So we've got our guy on a desert island or something. Uh, he's shouting. The sound will reflect off the wall, bounce back, and he'll hear it. So here we've got our reflected sound. Comes, comes out, and then back it goes. That's an echo. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Bye-bye.